How do you man, feel now that you've, you know, sort of immortalized Rick James just before he died? Man, all right, that was real weird. I, as a matter of fact, you know, I never talked about this. I talked to him maybe uh, two weeks before he died was the last time I, I'd spoken with him. Right right when we we was talking about doing a movie. Really? Yeah, he had written his book. Well, he had to be thrilled. He, well, no. The thing was, right when the movie, <laughs> right when we was getting ready to make the deal, he had second thoughts. Like, we had a conversation. He's like, there's certain elements in my life that I don't want to handle. <laughs> <laughs> I want to handle delicately. So what did he want to handle delicately? Well, I, don't, I didn't know. So it was like this whole thing. We did a conference call, and I was... Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was mad, like man, because we was right, we was about to close the deal, but then it turned out, and this is kind of, it's kind of deep. He was, he was worried about what his kids would think, yeah. and I'm thinking maybe he was worried about his legacy, like you know what I'm saying. The one skit, it's really funny. Tom Murphy. Rick James, bitch. Will you continue doing it? Uh, nah, we don't be. I don't run the characters into the ground. Maybe something like a tribute sketch. <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah. But it was like for months after that, it, it almost drove me insane. I walk around, people. I'm Rick James, bitch. I don't know how you do this fame thing, by the way. Right, what do I do? I hide. I seen you come out one time. You stuck your toe out of limousine and was surrounded. I don't know how they knew he was in the car. <laughs> so do you get to hang out with Eddie Murphy because you're hanging out with his brother? Oh, yeah. I've been, I mean, I've been to his house and stuff, yeah. At some house, huh? Yeah, he's, he's, he's done quite well yeah. for himself. Yeah, Eddie Murphy's right. one of the best stand-ups, but, but then he stopped doing it. Yeah, man. You know, see, that's the thing. Uh, most of the people who are really good at stand-up stop doing it. And I was like, well, is there something that happens that... You know, I don't know. I'll find out. You're going to stop? <laughs> I'm doing it like with a whole new attitude. It, the, the first thing is it's like change now because because I'm famous, it's almost like different doing it. You know, I'll come on stage for the first five minutes. People just take your picture and they, they just can't believe you're there. And then like it just takes a, it just takes a while to actually be doing stand up. Right. Whereas coming up through the years, you're usually just like this anonymous guy that's got to win the crowd over. You've and, already won them over. Yeah, now it's like they've bought into it wholesale. So it's, you know what I mean? It's kind of nice. It's, it's not, different. It's much different. It's interesting because I remember in that uh, Jerry Seinfeld film, he walks on stage and gets a standing ovation. He hasn't said a word. Right. Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like, well, you know, he was Seinfeld. So it's almost like he just flew across the Atlantic, like some Lindbergh. Like, I, don't, right. I mean, I'm not a stand up comedian, but I would think that would be preferable to go out there and have the crowd love you already. Than having to warm up a, a it, cold room. It would seem that way, but when you got the goods in your pocket, it's something fun knowing. These guys have no idea what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do. Right. I can, right. I can have my way. And now it's like. They have an know, expectation. I better you be look good. Down and they're all like, come on, baby, do that. Do, right. do uh, Rick James. Do yeah. Tyrone Biggums. Do the thing from TV. And it's like, maybe I don't want to do that. 